Welcome to the Excel Olympics YouTube channel. My name is Gashpur Kamashek. I'm an Excel MVP from Slovenia. And in this video, I'm going to show you why each and every Excel user should be using Power Query. There's a lot of misconception that Power Query, you know, should only be used if you're trying to get data from SQL or from Oracle or I don't know where, uh, because, because it can do that, right? It's an ETL tool. But you can simply use it as an embellishment to Excel tools because there are a few Excel tools that we use regularly and Power Query just takes them to a whole different level. And I'm going to show you three of those here. So the first one is a simple fill, right? So we use fill down very often. We do this mostly in pivot tables when you have categories and then you want to have them filled down. And you, there's a button for that with pivot tables, right? But in plain old Excel, there's no button for it. So what you do is you either copy it or, uh, but here's an interesting thing. There is a command that says fill, and you can say fill down, right? What, what will it do? Well, what you're thinking is it's gonna fill down what I would want it to do is fill down legends up to here and then stars up to here. But if I say fill down, something very strange happens. It just does legends all the way. And it, it didn't even warn me that it's gonna overwrite the stars. So, of course, this only means that you could do it like this, right? You would say this and fill down and then this and fill down. But imagine you had several hundreds of those. And this, this is just not a very good tool. But here's one that is. If I go to Power Query, so if I take this table, let me just see what this table is called. It's called table one, okay. Let's just call it fill demo. So we'll know what's happening. And if I bring this, into Power Query. So I say from this, now that command that said from sheet in, in my example, could just as well say from table range in, in your version of Excel. So here it is, right? I have it right here. And what do I say now? Well, the only thing I say is this transform fill and fill down. And do you see how I did it correctly, right? That's the brilliance of it. So it fills down until it hits the next one and then it stops and then it takes the next one and fills that one down. Exactly as that command I'm thinking should be working in Excel, but it doesn't. Uh, and let me just show you how this can be useful in another example. So let me do this. Let me do two tables. The first one will be date. And let's just go with today's date. And let's fill that up to here. And let's just do days. And then for two of those, so for this one and for this one, I'll have prices set. So the price on this one was 120, whereas on this one, it became 180, right? So this is the date. This is the price. And now if I turn both of these into tables, and let's call this dates, and let's call this prices. And now I'll bring both of these into our query. Right, so this one. So these are my dates and I'll just duplicate that one but in this case, I'll say, I don't want the dates. I want the prices table. There it is, right? And now, because I have sales for each and every day, I also need prices for each and every day. So what I do is I take this one and over here I have the same one, right? 
So I take this one and I merge it with the price table. Where is it? Where is it indeed? Oh, it's called dates two. Sorry. So let me merge that with the dates two table. It's actually the price table. I'll merge it by a date. And the only thing I'm interested in is price, right? And once I get it out, it just says, well, look, you have one here and you have one here, but I need it for each and every day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to say, and now I want you to fill down, but now I still have a blank one up there. So I'll go fill up. And that is brilliant. I have used that on numerous occasions. Um, and that is why the fill command, fill down, fill up, is just something that, you know, is a true build upon the Excel command. It does way more and it does it better. Now, the second thing is split. So how do you split things in Excel? Right. Um, and let me actually start with the blank one here. So if I had something like this, if I had Jan Feb Mar and let's say April, right? And I wanted to split this by by space, and I wanted to split this into columns or rows. Now the columns, what I would do is I would simply use the data text to columns it's delimited and the delimiter is space right nothing fancy there finish done but if i wanted to do it into rows that would be harder but i could basically do something like this i could go make this very narrow and then say what i want you to do is i want you to fill and then i want you to justify now this is a weird command if you want, so I can do a video on how it does what it does. Um, but it's a brilliant one. Look, it's split by space and it's split into rows. Okay? But this is not very useful in a scenario like this, where we have something that is like values that you would expect when you're doing some sort of form when you're filling out forms and there are multiple answers uh, and you could get something like this right so on this question somebody replied this and somebody replied this now what I would want in this situation is to have this row twice and once with this and once with this answer so once Excel once Power BI that's not so easy to do in Excel, right? You could sort of help with yourself with what I showed you, but it would just not work. Uh, there, with with the new dynamic arrays, you could do some magic, but still, this this is not something Excel natively does. Um, I could, like with this one, I could go with text to columns, but I would only get columns, not rows, right? So that's that wouldn't help me either. Now, as far as this one goes, I'm only looking for these numbers, right? And again, how would I get those in Excel? Well, basically you have three ways of getting them. The first one would be by going, let me just copy this. Let me copy this to a new sheet. So the first one would be, and this is not something I would recommend, but it would be text to columns, it's delimited with a space, finish, and now we get something like this. And I would say, well, okay, now take all of these and now only select those cells that are text, right? Because I only need the numbers. And then control minus, and what I want is to shift cells left. And there it is, those are my numbers. But those are all mechanical steps. They're not repeatable, they're not dynamic. Right? If a number changes in the cell to the left, this is just constant. It, it, it wouldn't change. So this is not the best way of doing it. Well, second way of doing it 
it's easier, but it's kind of gets you to the same spot because you could do this. You could do 12 and let's just do it as it should be. So this is 12, this is eight and there you go. It already has it. Just enter and that's flash fill for you. But if you don't know what flash fill is, watch this video. Um, it does exactly what I needed. It does it well, but these again, these are not formulas. These do not change as this changes. So again, that's not the best way of doing it. Now, a third way of doing it, and this one would be probably the best way of doing it would be by a formula. Our formula would go something like this. So let me do it over here because this one's going to impose a table on me and it's going to go wrong. So if I say equals and then I go mid from this text. And what I want you to do is to start on the with one. Oh, sorry. I lost that one there. So start with one and then go all the way to the length of this text, right? And then just give me, for each of those, give me a that number. Now this should actually be a different way around. This should be row of indirect of, and then like this and like this, right? So this is a very simple way of simply Here's what's missing of simply taking this and just putting it into separate. Uh, so just every letter takes up its own cell. Right? So I just split this into separate letters. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm looking for spaces and I'm lock looking for a particular space and that's the last one. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this and I'm also going to take this because I need it kind of later on. So I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to say if that equals a space. Right? Then what I'll get is a simple false and true. And now that I have this, now I can change this into zeros and ones simply by doing a minus minus. And now I'll multiply this by just those numbers. And what I get is my first space is on position six and my last space is on position 13. Now that I have this, now I can go, okay, give me a max out of that one. So a maximum value. And now I have everything I need because this is this, the position of the last space. And now I could go, equals mid from this I want you to start on the last space plus one and just give me whatever and there it is now this is brilliant because it gives you those numbers that you need dynamically so it's a formula if this changes this will also change but do you notice how, well, how hard it was, right? Now, there's an easier formula to do that, but still, there's way better way to do this if you just go to Power Query. And in Power Query, what you do is we'll do two things. Number one, we'll say, well, look, I have this, and what I want is to split this column. Right? It's, it's the same command, kind of like in Excel. Split, uh, split to columns. Over here, what you would say is simply split column. But here you have some brilliant, brilliant things. Number one, lowercase to uppercase, brilliant. Digit to non-digit, brilliant. But even if I just go by delimiter, and I say my delimiter is space, I could go not each occurrence, which is what Excel does. I could go just the last one, or I could go just the first one. 
Now that is brilliant. What's also brilliant is I could have custom separators, which could be multiple different things uh, brought together. Again, better than Excel. And if I just go, okay, there it is, right? A brilliant, brilliant thing. And here's another one. I'll take this one. I'll say split column. I'll say by delimiter. And then I'll say my delimiter is actually comma and space behind it. But what I want you to do is advanced options. And I want you to split into rows. I go, okay. And now for John, I have two rows, one with Excel, one with Power BI. And that is brilliant, right? So split to columns, Power Query just takes uh, text to columns from Excel command to a whole different level. And now for the last one, let's just do a simple lookups, right? Uh, now I talked about this, you know, X lookup versus the Power, uh, <clears throat> Power Query joins or merge uh, in Power Query. And here, I'll just do a simple one. What I want is this. So I want to join these in here. But the problem is, here's an ID. Now here, that ID is present four times. So if I did a lookup here, what would I get? Well, you would get the first one. With the X lookup, you could go from top or from bottom, so you could get the first one or the last one, but still you wouldn't get all four. But now with Power Query, let me just see what these two are. This is the main table, this is the lookup table, cool. So let's bring this into Power Query. And then let's just duplicate this one. And let's say, we don't need the main table. We need the lookup table, which is called main table two. I could rename that. So let's call it a lookup table like this. And then I go to my main table and I say merge. And I merge these two together like this. And I say, here's an ID and here's an ID. Oh, I think I just did it wrong. So lookup table, there it is. Here's an ID and here's an ID. I go, okay, here's what I get. <clears throat> it brought in all four of those. So now I can just say, give me the points like this. And now I have four rows belonging to John with all those different values from the other table, right? Brilliance right there. Well, let me just do another one. Let's say I want to do the same two tables again. So I'll merge. Here's a lookup. So it's this and this. But then, as a join kind, I want you to use, let's say, left anti join. So show me what's in the first table, but is not present in the second one, or even harder, give me a right anti-join. Right? But I'll do left rather than this. So let's do it like this. And here it is. So George, number seven, has nothing in the lookup table. There is no ID seven in the lookup table. And simply by doing merge and an anti-join, you can get those results. So what this video was supposed to do, and I hope it, it got to doing that, was showing you how Power Query is not, you know, it is that beast of the ETL tool, uh, you know, that you can use to get data from I don't know where into Excel and transform it, but you can just use it as just an upgrade to these free Excel tools. And if you just use it as that, you'll be getting plenty from it.
right? So this was Power Query as an upgrade to these Excel tools. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe. <clears throat> if you have any other ideas how Power Query just helps upgrading Excel, uh, leave them in the comments below. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.